San Miguel of Azarani Camelum Fellow with Jesus Christ to us in Nazareth. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Let's just worship together and praise the Lord. Amen. again right here at Oasis Church. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. The first time that you're watching, we bring you greetings. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're watching on Facebook, on 
YouTube, uh, please make sure that you like, you share, you subscribe, uh, whatever you do to further the kingdom of God. We're on a series called Born for the Impossible. Uh, I believe that we are born for the impossible. This is the word that God has given me to speak about for the, for the, for the last couple of weeks. And, and I think one more coming up next week. Um, uh, we are born for the impossible. This is week three. We are discovering what God has brought us here on earth to do. We are discovering, uh, we need to look for opportunities of impossible. In other words, something in us, when we see something that looks impossible, something in us must be stirred to say that this is an opportunity for the kingdom of God to be displayed. And today, I want us to go dive in again deeper, and we are paging the word of God to find out and discover all the places uh, in scripture where it can define to us what steps we can take so that we can enter so that we can enter into the impossible turn your bibles with me to the book of acts chapter 4 from verse 29 to 30 i'm going to use just these two verses today to be our building block uh, for today's teaching i hope that you guys have been blessed for the last couple of weeks uh, as we are talking about being born for the impossible. Acts chapter 4 from verse 29 to 30, Uti. Now, this is, this is Peter speaking. Now, Lord, consider their threats. Consider their threats and grant your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. I'm going to read that again. It's so good. Now, Lord, consider their threats. The apostles were being threatened uh, by the religious rulers of the time. Utu, Utu Peter now consider their threats. They've just been taken out of prison. They've just been in prison for a couple of days. And Bakisha, Ejele, and maybe Puma, they gather together as a church and they start praying to God. And this is the prayer that Peter is praying. Uti, now, Lord, consider their threats and grant your servants with all boldness that they may speak your word. And then number two, by stretching out your hand to heal and the signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word, Namtlanje. We thank you that your word is a lamp unto our feet. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that it is a light unto our path that it causes a gateway of communication between the heavens and ourselves, that it begins to show us who we really are in our spirits and our mind is renewed. Holy Spirit, help us, Father God, this day, that we may be able, Father God, to open up our hearts, remove all the distractions, let no one be able to steal the word that is about to be implanted in your people's lives. We thank you, Father God, that it's going to bring forth a harvest of a hundredfold. We thank you that all good and perfect gifts come from you. And we thank you that your word is a gift to us. And we receive it as a perfect gift. We receive it as the ultimate gift in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When you look at the life of John the Baptist in the Bible, the Bible says that when it introduces John in the book of Luke chapter 1, the Bible says that John will come in the spirit and in the power of Elijah. Go check it out in Luke chapter 1. The Bible says that when John comes, this is the, the angel speaking uh, to his mom. He's saying that when John is born, he will come in the spirit and in the power of Elijah. The Bible is very clear that John will carry the mantle, the spirit, and the power of Elijah. Matthew chapter 11, verse 11. Utu Jesu me kuluma. Utu truly, I tell you that among born of women, no one is greater than John. Uh, but Utu Jesu, but the least in the kingdom, the least in the kingdom will be greater than him. I want us to note, Namthanje, as part of my introduction, it got me thinking when I was reading the scripture, the Bible says that John will come in the spirit and in the power of Elijah. When you look at Elijah in the Bible, you find that he's one of the most prolific, one of the most powerful, one of the most provoking 
prophets of the time. If you find the stories where Elijah's stories were written, and when you see Jesus comparing who Elijah was with who John would be, when you see the angel saying John will come in the spirit and in the power of Elijah, we, we have to understand that when you have to compare these two people, there's nothing much you can compare them to, But when you, because when you look at the life of Elijah, you see a life of someone who is, ha, has the power of miracles. There is not even one miracle that's listed uh, in the Bible that John had been able to perform. When you look at Impilo, yeah, when you look at Impilo, Elijah, you see, some, you, see someone who, 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 you see someone who parted the Jordan River. When you look at Impilo, yeah, 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 Elijah, you, you, you see someone who fought with Jezebel and Ahab. When you see Elijah, you see someone who went up to Mount Carmel, and the Bible said that when Baal had, had failed to perform to burn the sacrifice of the bull, Elijah, what color? Who, who, who responds with fire and fire rained down from heaven and consumed the sacrifice and the water. We see Elijah, the man of God who declared because of Ahab, because of Ahab, where it comes to Baal, and when you look at the word Baal, it speaks of, it speaks of the God of fertility. It speaks of the God of thunder and water. In other words, what Baal, what, what, what Ahab and Jezebel were saying, that Amman of crops and fertility, the fertility that will come on the ground because of Baal. And because of that, Elijah Watting Zoe Misa in Vula to prove that the God of rain is actually the God of the heavens, the God of the universe, the Lord of the universe, who is God Himself. Jehovah is his name. Elijah prayed and the rain stopped for three and a half years. Why? Because he was performing this miracle to prove to Ahab that God was God, not Baal. So when you compare these prophets, when you compare these prophets, there's not a lot of things you can compare them to except to one thing. The only thing in comparison to John and Elijah is how provocative they were, is how bold they were. For the next three and a half years, because I am I serve the living God. To Elijah, or declare I would he hears the sound of the abundance of rain. What to my seven sack would the samba so beggar? The samba so beggar in Vula or Langa. The Bible says it's seven somewhere that he sees, but nothing but a cloud on the seventh time, a size of a hand. When you look at Elijah, you see the man of God that was fed by the, the, the widow of Zarephath. The Bible says, uh, what to Elijah, something to eat, what to mama, uh, I have nothing in my house except a little flour and except a little oil. The Bible says that, oh to Elijah, make for me first and I promise you that the flour and the oil will not cease. The only comparison I really have between John and Elijah is that when you look at the life of John, he is one of the prophets or provoker, the leadership of that time, or provoker or Herod, or Herod is the guy who was Tetris, the Bible says he was Tetris because he killed the two year olds Big Megzalovaches, he's the guy that murdered uh, two year olds and below because he wanted to circumvent Uxala who got chased. When you see Elijah, when you see when you see John approach Herod, oh Herod he had married his sis, his his brother's wife. Oh, Philip, he had married his brother's wife, and in marrying his brother's wife, John confronted Herod. Once again, it is unlawful for you to marry your brother's wife. Put John into jail. And as he put John into jail, he had a banquet. And at this banquet, his daughter came and did twirls and swells, and everybody was amazed. And this girl comes back and says, Now, Dad, I want the head of John on a platter. And we see, and we see Herod murder John. 
in the Gospels because he had provoked him. He had confronted him. That means John had a boldness to him. Elijah had a boldness to him. These are the two things when the Bible says John shall come in the spirit of Elijah, we see a John who is provocative, who is confronting Oti. Okala Ekwadul is crying in the wilderness. Oti, repent! For the kingdom of God is at hand. He is the God that provoked the kingdom. He is the God that spoke to the Pharisees. He is the God that declared and ushered in. He, the Bible says he was the voice crying out in the wilderness saying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. The Bible says that John came with the gospel of repentance. He came, with, he came, he came teaching and preaching repentance. These are the two things that see Bonai with Elijah, not John. We see the boldness. Now, Utu Peter, Utu Peter, Utu Peter, now Lord. <laughs> Consider their threats and grant your servants all boldness so that we can speak your word. Some background on this verse. The Bible teaches us in the book of John chapter 3 that when Peter and John went up into the temple, they went through the gate called Beautiful and they found a man who had been lame who would be brought to that gate daily, who would be asking for arms. Uh, long story short, the Bible says this man asked for silver and gold and little by Peter responded and said, uh, silver and gold we do not have, <laughs> but such as we have, take up our hand Take up your carpet, stand up and walk. This man gets up, long story short, uh, the whole city is amazed by this miracle because this is, part, this is the first miracle that's happening in the book of Acts where Peter and John are raising a man who was lame. The Bible is very clear in the book of Acts chapter 4 that they were, they were imprisoned because of this act because they had done this declaring that they had done this in the name of Jesus Christ. And in their discourse with the Sanhedrin and in their trial, they are talking, but, but they are then threatened. Do not say that all of this has happened because Jesus Christ had come and died. They wanted to silence them. And the Bible teaches us that the church prayed with all boldness. They said in the book of Acts chapter 4 from verse 29, the Bible says, now Lord consider their threats. They have threatened the children of God to not speak in the name of the Lord. I do not know what's threatening to you, what is threatening you, Namsanje, that's going to make you not speak in the name of the Lord. Maybe it's that diabetes. The Bible says, now consider their threats. Now, we have to ask God to consider, I don't know what's threatening you. Sickness might be threatening you. The doctor's report might be threatening you, telling you that you are HIV positive. We, Utu, Utu, Utu Peter, we cannot speak except for what we have seen and what we have heard. The Bible says, the question is, what have you seen? What have you heard? Because what you have seen will cause you to speak with all boldness. What you have heard will cause you to declare what God has declared over your life. Utu, 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 Utu Peter, now consider their threats. He's praying. Consider the threat that this disease is going to kill me. Consider the threat that my child is on drugs. Consider the threat that my husband doesn't sleep at home. Consider the threat that I'm unemployed, that I'm in debt. Consider the threat. I don't know what is threatening you today. But the Bible declares that grant your servants all boldness. Today I want an all boldness to rise so that you can speak above what has been spoken. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 4, men shall not live by bread alone, but they shall live by every word that proceedeth. 
The question is, what have you heard? You've paid too much attention on the doctor's report. You've paid too much attention on your circumstance. You've paid too much attention, Yoguti. You are unemployed. You've paid too much attention that the business is not working. What have you seen? That means start refocusing yourself. Start finding and looking at businesses that are succeeding. Start hanging out with people that are successful. Start hanging out with people about Kulumi language, your peeler. Quit moving around with people because it's only, you will only speak what you have seen and you will only speak what you have heard. The book of Genesis chapter 11 speaks of the story of the Tower of Babel. The Bible says that the men, the men and women at that time, the, the, the earth had one language. Verse 1, Uti, the earth had one language. The world had one language. And, the Bible, and they had decided that they will build a tower into heaven. They would build a tower into heaven. And the Bible says, God came down and said, look, verse 6, Genesis eleven six. 6. Uti, look, the people are united. Shoo, the people are united and they speak the same language. Who are you united to? Uh, because the impossible will not be possible if you are united with people that can only see what is impossible. You can only be united. The Bible says can two walk together unless they have agreed. The Bible says the people of the Tower of Babel had were united. The Bible says that the, the Bible says that it is like, oh, behold, how good and how pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It shall be like oil that rushes down from the head of Aaron right down to his cloak. The Bible says that God came down and said, the people are united and they have one language. After this, watch what God says. Nothing, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. Because they have one language. The Bible says in the book of Matthew, if your eye is single, your whole body has light. In other words, if you have only one target, if, you, if you're single-minded, the Bible says, a, 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 a double-minded man, oh James, the double-minded man can get nothing from the Lord because we have to be single-minded. It's either that thing is possible or that thing is impossible. Make up your mind today that what I'm facing in my life is possible. The Bible says that this season, we, okay, well, listen, this season we have to have a couple of people that are going to be single-minded, that are going to have one mind. Joel, Joel chapter 3 verse 10, let the weak, if you're weak, you're not going to declare that you're weak. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the blind say, I can see. Let the lame say, I can walk. Let the diseased say, I was healed. Let everyone who's unemployed say, I'm employed. Let everyone who's have a failed business say, I have an amazing business. We cannot have, we cannot live a life of impossibilities but yet be cowards. You cannot be a coward. You cannot step back and lean back and think that things as was in Zagalela came. You have to lean into the problem, lean into the situation. The Bible says that when God, when Jesus was about to heal the man with leprosy, from the, the Bible says he stretched out his hand and touched him. He did that impossible. People during that time would not touch people with leprosy. The Bible says he reached down and touched him. Now watch, once you are able to speak the word of God with boldness, to speak the gospel with boldness, to speak the good news with gospel, faith arises. The reason why you haven't had enough faith in your life is because your ears are full of things of why it cannot happen. Your life is full of every reason why. The economy, uh, the president, uh, my job, my job, or my ex-husband, my ex-wife, my kids are crazy. No, you are constantly filled with excuses why it's not possible. The Bible says in the book of, jo in the book of Joshua chapter 1, over 6, Uti, this book of law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you can make, make your way prosperous. The Bible says, be strong. Mm, verse 8, be strong. Be of good courage. We're looking for a bunch of Christians that are going to take the step of faith to start the business. Take the step of faith to declare they're healed. Take the step of faith to go and ask the doctor to check if the cancer is still there. Check for yourself. Take the step of faith. Be strong. Be courageous. 
Utu Peter, now consider their threats. Number two, once you consider their threats, stretch your hand. In other words, you consider your threats by declaring what God has declared. God, we are not going to stretch our hands to heal and perform signs and wonders if our word of faith is not aligned with the word that God has declared. The word of power is preceded by the word of faith. Mm. The word of power. In other words, when power comes into our lives, into our circumstances, when we're enveloped and inspired to act out in power, what precedes that power is the word of faith. The Bible says that if you can have faith as small as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thrown into the ocean, into the sea. You will say to whatever mountain you are facing. I don't know what mountain you are facing, but you shall say. We will not say it for you. You shall say. In closing, I want to say this. The Bible says that in, in the earlier verses, in verse 13, chapter 4, Acts the Bible says that now when they saw the boldness of Peter, phew, that means they saw people that are bold. I wonder what people see when they see you. I wonder what they see when they hear you talk about Ungulungul. I wonder what they hear when they hear you talk about faith. I wonder what they hear when, when, they, when, you, when they hear you talk about the word of God, which I know I is in Jilgangulungulu. practical. You see, if you continue speaking like that, you make the word of God of no effect in your life. The Bible says that consider their threats. Once you've considered them, that's when you're going to be able to stretch forth your hand. That's going to be able, then God is going to be able to stretch forth his hand and perform signs and wonders. Why? Because the word of God has been proceeded, has come out of your mouth. Let me close with this. The Bible says, now when they saw that Peter, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated, listen to this, they, so the Sanhedrin, or rather the rulers of the law, the, those Pharisees and the guys that are really judging Peter and John, when they considered that these two men were uneducated, <laughs> untrained, the Bible says they marveled. Why did they marvel? Watch that last line. And they realized that they had been with Jesus. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So once you have been with Jesus, once you have allowed the word of faith to build up the boldness in you, when people look at you, they're going to see you, it's, no, you're unqualified for this. When people look at you, they're going to say, no, 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 you're uneducated for this. No, you, you don't have the right background for this. You, you didn't even have the money to start that business. Uh, you, you don't have the correct credentials to be the person that you are. When they consider you, they will marvel because they will know that there's only one thing that has happened. You had been with Jesus. When you have been with Jesus, education cannot limit you. When you have been with Jesus, health risks cannot limit you. Training cannot limit you. Your background cannot limit you. Rejection. All the people that have said no in your life. Rejection cannot limit you. Retrenchment cannot limit you. Even age. The Bible is very clear in the story. The Bible says that that man that walked, he was 40 years old. They, they are saying this to prove that <laughs> I'm not age land. Today I want to do a prayer of breaking limitations. We're going to do a prayer of breaking limitations. I'm going to pray that God begins to break every single limitation in your life. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. I'm going to pray the prayer of Jabez. The Bible says that Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And the Bible says that one day he prayed that, Oh God, that you would bless me and that you would enlarge my territory. Today I'm going to pray for the breaking of limitations. Let's pray. Father, I thank you and I'm that you're beginning to break every single limitation, that you're beginning to break everything we have held on to. All the chains that let limit us from 
going into the place that you have called us to. We break the doubt. We break the history. We break the place of our lives. We break free from the place. We declare that we have been born for the impossible. We thank you, Father God, that you are breaking the limitation, that you are breaking the curse, that you are lifting the burden, that the heaviness is being lifted from our lives. I thank you, Father God, that nothing that is that is on earth can stop us from accomplishing what you have sent us to do. We have considered their threats, my Father. And we realize, Father God, we can only speak on what we have seen and we can only speak on what we have heard. The Bible says they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. In Jesus' name, we thank you that our spirits are being stirred today. Day, to have to have the capacity to have the tenacity to have father god to have the heart and the hunger mighty god to go into the impossible we break every single limitation we break every single no that we've received. We break every single place where we've not received that assistance. I thank you that you are breaking discouragement. You are giving us a boldness to speak the word of faith. In Jesus' name we pray. We believe that we are living in the days of the possible. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, today, thank you so much for joining us once again. I hope that you have been blessed by the word of God. Namklanje, we are going to continue to pray for you. We're going to continue to, we want to hear testimonies. Don't keep quiet. Why? The, Bible, the word testimony means do it again. The reason why we have to testify is because when I read your testimony, I need to say to myself, God, won't you do it again? And today we want people that will testify of situations in their lives where they thought it was impossible, where they see God moving them into the place of possibility. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you have the means to give today, we ask you that you would uh, offer your, 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 your sacrifices of tithes and offerings. Uh, we have opened the platform so that we can be able to be generous and be able to partner uh, with us so that we can further the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom of God. As you start this next week, don't forget that you were born for the impossible. God bless you.